Good morning from San Francisco. Uh, it's a sunny San Francisco morning, and it's really our great pleasure to transmit live to you to uh, Milan to the Humanitas Conference. I'd like to thank uh, Ali and all the course organizers for this opportunity. Um, I think this is uh, a wonderful vision of Ali's to literally unite the globe. Uh, we all share our passion for interventional endoscopy. So this morning, uh, I put together a couple cases for you. We're going to start with our first case. I know time is short, so I'm going to dive right into our first case. Uh, and we have a very sick patient who has just been brought over from the intensive care unit. I was called actually yesterday late about this patient. She's 51 years old. She is septic. She has acute cholecystitis. She has multiple comorbidities. She is morbidly obese. Her BMI is over 60. In fact, she won't even fit on our floral table. So we could not even do ERCP in this patient. Um, she uh, just had a stroke and pulmonary embolism. She has been on a heparin drip. Um, so we've stopped her heparin drip for our procedure. And what we'd like to do this morning is a endoscopic cholecystoenterostomy. So on your screen, hopefully you're seeing large now, the endoscopic view of the antrum. I have a therapeutic echoendoscope, and I'm going to pass this through the pylorus into the duodenum. And now let's switch, please, to the endoscopic, I'm sorry, the ultrasound view large. And I'm going to quickly try to uh, visualize uh, her gallbladder. She has NASH. Um, and um, uh, I'm sorry, she has fatty liver, which you can see here. And uh, just give me a quick moment as I look for her gallbladder. And I'm pushing now towards the apex. So just a, a few moments uh, to or orient myself and as I look for her gallbladder. This is the portal vein here. This is uh, her uh, bile duct you can see right here. Let me get a cursor for you. Right here, her bile duct here. Now you see the IVC, the aorta. These are just some landmarks that we're looking for. And I'm torquing the scope uh, to uh, find her gallbladder. And as I turn this way, I'm starting to see something here. This is looking like her gallbladder. You see that it has a very thick wall. It's filled with debris here, the thick wall of the gallbladder. We can freeze this image and very quickly measure out the wall thickness. So it's about uh, four millimeters. And I'm going to torque my scope. You can see that on the room view, what I'm doing with my scope torquing to look at her gallbladder. Here are the stones in her gallbladder. Uh, she had an ultrasound showing stones in the gallbladder and also an obstruction at the gallbladder neck. She had a HIDA scan that showed none filling of her gallbladder. So here you can see the shadowing from stones in her gallbladder. And we're going to look for a window that will allow us to drain her gallbladder internally. So just give me a couple more moments to try to find the optimal window to use to create her cholecystoduodenostomy. So the echoendoscope is in the duodenal bulb towards the apex. I think this is about the best window right here. And we're going to perform this gallbladder drainage using a lumen opposing stent. And this, uh, this, uh, the delivery system of this stent has cautery integrated into the tip. Our goal is to minimize any risk of bile leak. So we want to get into the gallbladder and immediately deploy the stent. We don't want to do any exchanges over a guide wire. So we're not going to use an FNA needle. We're not going to exchange for a dilating bougie or a balloon catheter to dilate the tract. We want to get that stent in there right away and deploy the stent. And we want to be able to deploy that stent very precisely across the wall of the duodenum. 
So let's, uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to now insert the, the delivery system, the sheath of the lumen opposing stent. This is a hydrophilic coated sheath which allows us to advance it very smoothly through the working channel. This is a large channel echo endoscope with a 3.7 millimeter channel. And this sheath has a diameter of almost 11 French. So you need to use a large channel echo endoscope. I am now lure locking this down, no different than the way you lure lock an FNA needle to the biopsy port. Here on the camera view, you can see the handle. And the handle consists of two components. The lower component here allows me to advance the sheath forward. And there is cautery integrated into the tip so that I can apply cautery to gain access to the gallbladder. The upper component here allows me to deploy the stent. And I deploy that in two separate steps. First, the distal flange. I'm going to get a stop. It will lock and click in place after the distal flange is deployed. And then in a completely separate step, I will deploy the proximal flange. All right, now I'm going to have to torque my scope a little bit more to keep this position. I'm going to have my assistant also hold the echo endoscope in, in position so I can get the optimal view here. It's a little bit unstable, so I'm going to just take a quick moment and as you can see, I don't have a lot of runway here since the gallbladder appears to be fairly contracted. All right, so now uh, before we hook up the cautery, I'm just going to advance my sheath forward so that I can see it in view. Okay, let's hold the echo endoscope right there. And this lumen opposing stent comes in two sizes, a 10 and a 15 millimeter. We're using, of course, the smaller 10 millimeter because we don't have a very large or dilated gallbladder. Now you can see the tip of the sheath here against the wall of the duodenal bulb, and you can see the gallbladder below. All right? So now we're going to hook up our cautery. So the cable has been hooked up, and we're hot. Our setting is on pure cut current. We are going to advance the sheath into the gallbladder no different than the way you would do FNA. Using pure cutting current, we're going to enter into the gallbladder, and as soon as we are in, we're going to lock our sheath, and we're going to deploy the distal flange. All right, so are we ready to go? Good, so you can see the tip. I'm giving cautery now. I'm going in. It's a thick wall. And possibly because the wall is so thick, I've just had some difficulty penetrating through. Let me just have a quick moment, and we'll go again. I still have not penetrated through, but I'm getting there. This must be a very, very thick fibrotic wall. Now I'm in. So I just popped through. I think you could see that, the audience. You can see the length of the sheath that is now inside. Now it's very critical that you follow the steps very precisely. The first step is we want to lock our sheath. And I'm doing that right here. I've got the sheath locked so that the sheath does not accidentally slip back. Sheath is locked. Next step, we take off our safety pin here. And we're going to unlock the upper hub, the gray part. And I'm going to start pulling this back. And as I pull this back, we should see deployment of the distal flange. I'm just going to push this in slightly more so that we can see deployment of the distal flange. I'm slowly pulling back. What I want to make sure of, because we don't have a lot of runway here, is that the distal flange deploys only in the gallbladder. All 
All right, now I heard the click. Okay, so now I'm going to deploy the proximal flange. But before I do that, I want to get myself into better position. And the proximal flange I'm going to deploy in the working channel of the scope. But I have to make sure that I'm in good position. Let me pull back a little bit on the sheath, a little bit to pull the gallbladder back a little bit. It's important to take your time, make sure you're in good position. You can see the distal flange deployed. And with the distal flange deployed here, I'm using it like a retractor to pull the gallbladder back a little bit. You can see that right now. All right, so this is a good position. I'm locking my sheath again. And now I'm ready to deploy the proximal flange by pulling up on the gray hub like this. And the proximal flange is now deployed. The proximal flange is deployed in the working channel of the echo endoscope. We are now going to switch to the endoscopic view. So make the endoscopic view large. I'm going to get, start giving some gas, some CO2, and I'm going to start to advance the proximal flange out of the sheath. And don't look at the, don't look at the uh, EUS view. That really is not important. So we have some fluid here. And I'm going to push that proximal flange all the way out. And you can see that the stent has just deployed. There it is at the bottom. You can see bile that is starting to drain. And we're probably going to see some pus draining out of there. Hopefully you can see the endoscopic view now of the deployed stent and the contents draining out. The, the contents are look like pus. Look at that. This is pure, thick pus coming out of the proximal flange. All right, so let's get a better view. Now, normally, if the patient were not anticoagulated on a heparin drip previously and has to stay, of course, on heparin because of the PE, uh, we're going to now pull this out to optimize drainage. And normally, we would dilate up the tract and go inside the gallbladder with our endoscope. We're not going to do that today. What I will do, though, is I'll pass a pediatric scope down. And um, we'll just try to suck out some of this thick pus that you see draining. And let me see. If, there you can see this white, thick pus. This patient, 10 minutes ago, before we started, was hypotensive. Our anesthesiologist, who intubated the patient, was very, very nervous about this patient. And I can guarantee you this is going to make a dramatic difference in her outcome now. Her sepsis will hopefully resolve very quickly. So here you can see the fully deployed lumen opposing stent draining the thick pus in the background. You can see the thick pus. So I'm now going to, there it is, see that? That thick pus coming out of the gallbladder. And let's have the EUS image large just for a quick moment. And perhaps I can show you the stent in the gallbladder. But let's quickly um, get ready to switch out for a pediatric gastroscope because what I'd like to do is just go in the lumen of the stent and suck out some of this thick pus. So while we're exchanging, the part that we always learn with every, what I love about interventional endoscopy and, and, and how we're pushing the frontier of what we can do um, is that we learn with every procedure and today, I also encountered something new. I've, been, I've done many of these now, probably close to 50, and I, uh, for the gallbladder drainage, using the lumen opposing stent. I ha I've never encountered this type of difficulty getting into the gallbladder. And, and here the wall, as you saw, was very thick and fibrotic. So I had to deliver cautery for a longer period of time. Normally, it goes in like butter. It just goes right into the lumen. Uh, and then this time, as you saw, I had to apply cautery. But what's important is to keep your view and to um, do this in uh, layers, in stages. 
And as you saw, as I gave additional cautery, I was able to then finally gain access to the gallbladder. You also saw how it was challenging to deploy the stent because we need a runway of about three centimeters. So we had very little room in this contracted gallbladder to deploy the stent. And we addressed that by adjusting our position as we deployed the stent. All right, now I'm going to pass the pediatric gastroscope down. And I'd like to try to see if I can suck out a little bit of that pus. Um, it won't be easy because this is a pediatric gastroscope with a small 2.0 millimeter channel. Um, but I think it will allow us to see the lumen of the stent. And maybe we can even look a little bit into the gallbladder. So here I am in the duodenal bulb. And while I'm uh, looking for the, uh, the stent, which is right here, um, I do have one more case I can show you if you're interested. There's the pus draining, which is um, a glue coil of a patient with large gastric varices. So if there's interest in seeing that case, uh, I can go over to the next room and I can show you that case. So here's our stent, and our stent will help anchor the tip of the scope as I turn it into the stent. You can see here she was on heparin and there's already some bleeding that is um, not going into the lumen. It just comes from the expansion of the stent. So that is why we don't want to dilate uh, the lumen of the stent now because obviously we want to minimize any risk. So one more time, I'm going to try to maneuver my way into the lumen of the stent here. There's the pus and uh, let's have some irrigation. I have irrigation hooked up to the scope here to the channel I'm pressing down on the irrigation pedal is it on yeah and now you can see fluid floating in and I'm going to try to suck out some of this thick pus and there you can see the lumen of the lumen opposing stent that enters into the gallbladder and here the pus is coming out beautifully beautifully here so I'm able to suck out the the pus very nicely there it is Do you see it coming out this spells relief. This is, will make a dramatic change in this patient's condition. And I think uh, her mortality before this procedure was very, very high. She was septic. I think this is going to resolve very fast now that we're draining her internally. And I also think that this is a reasonable for this patient with so many comorbidities. She's not a surgical candidate. Um, for cholecystectomy, uh, or she's very high risk, clearly, I think this would be actually a very reasonable long-term solution. And what would that be? We will leave the stent in here for at least six months, and that will create a mature tract, and then we can remove the stent, and she should actually get good continuous drainage through the fistula tract. I just got a sign to please wrap up. Please wrap up. I do have a glue coil case. But if, if uh, time it doesn't allow me to show it, that's OK. I will record it. We, re we um, post many of our videos on Vimeo, and perhaps you can watch it at a later time. If this is the end, I want to thank once again the organizers for this opportunity. Uh, it's been an exciting morning for us. And uh, I look forward to seeing everyone in the audience soon. I will be flying out to Milan uh, in a few hours. Thank you very much.